Bulls and blowout hit them in 10 threes. Bases are loaded for Verlander, who waits out a real finish. He swings, and it's a high fly ball, deep center field. It is gone. Home run. And a huge bat flip to celebrate. All right, Ben, start the show already. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Flippin' Bats. We are back with a guest. This is going to be awesome. Lars Newtbar of the St. Louis Cardinals and Team Japan in the WBC is about to join me. He leaves for the WBC in just a couple of days. Pumped to talk to him about that, and as well as being with the Cardinals. I mean, he was there for the Albert Pujols run last year, the Yachty and Wayno, and I, I just can't wait. This guy... Uh, has been a blast to watch. I know he's a character. I know everybody that plays with him and fans that watch him absolutely love Lars Newtbar. So I'm pumped to talk to him, to hear all the stories that he has to share. So without further ado, let's get to it and welcome in outfielder for the St. Louis Cardinals, Lars Newtbar. All right, and I am pumped now to be joined by St. Louis Cardinals outfielder, Rick quickly becoming a fan favorite around there and also a member of Team Japan this year in the WBC, Lars Newtbar. Lars, thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's a long time coming ever since I made that WBC uh, roster. I know. I feel like uh, I feel like this this needed to happen. I'm pumped to talk to you about WBC, which is right around the corner. You're probably about to leave in a couple of days. Um, we were just talking about it before we started, but obviously I'm from Virginia, but I just moved out here to LA. I live like five minutes from where you're from. And I feel like every time I, every time I do anything in the sports world, it's about how good you and your brother and your family was at sports at El Segundo high school. And you were an athlete that played a bunch of sports. And I know you were really good as well at football. W what made you ultimately decide to, to stick to baseball? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it was uh, it was kind of I was born into a baseball family. Like you said, I had an older brother that played. My mom played softball, and baseball in Japan. My dad played baseball growing up. So uh, I kind of grew up in a baseball family, um, really started taking football seriously once I got to high school and stuff. But um, had a little injury my senior year. It was right before the NLI um, for, for USC for, for baseball. So I was like, you know what? This is probably a signal that uh, that baseball is my future. Um, I had plans to still play my sophomore year at USC, but um, I started my freshman year at, at, on campus. So they were like, you know what, <laughs> we're sending you to uh, lacrosse, Wisconsin. You're playing summer ball instead of doing summer camp over for football. So uh, they kind of made that decision for me. So as I'm, as I'm sure, you know, the, the area that you're from, it's a small town, everybody's connected. And, and my producer went to played baseball at Santa Monica, know a bunch of the same people. So before you came on, uh, he talked to your boy, Connor Underwood, and we got some good stories, I feel like, about you. But the, the main one I need to know yeah. is you're playing golf, right? Why mm -hmm. the rumor has it is you used to play golf with range balls. Is this true? <laughs> it, is true. No. It, is, it is true. It is true. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, shoot, I picked up golf in like 2020. Um, I was working manual labor, you know, I was a manual labor in 2020. So, um, you know, the, you know, I, I, I couldn't afford, you know, pro V ones or anything like that. So, uh, I'd hit the range. If I found a good one in there, I'd stick a couple in my bag and then boom, we'd go, we'd go and play, we'd go and play, uh, play the round. And I'd be, you know, I'd be, uh, hitting, hitting balls that are a little beaten up kind of, you know, they say practice on them, but they got the job done. They got the job done. I it's totally understandable that you couldn't afford the pro V ones. If only there was a golf ball, maybe that was between a range ball and a pro V one that would, that probably would have worked out perfectly. <laughs> uh, so you're a, uh, your uh, older brother. No, he, you gotta, <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's incredible. Your your older brother Nigel went to USC as well. Played baseball, ends up getting drafted. Obviously, both good athletes. But um, one thing I, I want to know because my older brother was nine years older, so not quite the gap, and and played and still plays baseball and was my idol growing up, right? And was always getting a lot of advice from him. So, you know, with with your older brother, kind of just a little bit behind him, but him playing and going to USC and going through the draft process and everything. What, what's some of the advice that he would give to you 
going through USC and getting to that draft that draft process? Were you guys really close and talking about that the whole time? Yeah, for sure. He was. Um, I mean, he's been instrumental in my whole career. You know that. I mean, similarly, probably to you, but he was kind of the guy that you were always chasing. You know, you wanted to be like your brother. You wanted to be better than your older brother, and and so it was just like having a role model and that idol in your life from day one is is huge. But like you said, going through college, going through the recruiting, going through the draft, um, having a guy that's been there and done that, and you know, just like giving you some of the ropes. You know, making sure you're you're doing the right things, you know, kind of giving you uh, a perspective of somebody that's, that's gone through, that's kind of been through the stresses that really kind of eases everything for you. And then, you know, now it, it's always, he's always been a great motivator for me and being like, you know, baseball is a lot better than what, what, what you could be doing, you know? So when I go through the slumps in the minor leagues and I'd go through some of those rough patches, you know, he's always a guy that I can lean on and, and somebody that can give me advice in a different perspective. Cause you know, like I said, you know, I, I was, doing i was you know working in 2020 uh season was minor league season was canceled so i was working in 2020 that was a good perspective changer but um he's been so good for me you know for my whole development and, and having that older brother and someone like you said that's been there and done that he's been, he's been huge for me i'm sure um we're similar in a sense that very competitive obviously like you said you want to be better than your brother uh it's really tough when your brother is a hall of famer one of the best of all time because then you feel like you've never done anything in your life but i digress um congrats to you for getting it done <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a little, a little, yeah, yeah a little different in that regard but yeah 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 so you're there for i think 16 17 18 you're at usc and then i, I like asking guys about this because you know i've had Hall of Famers on here, all stars all over the map. But, you know, a lot of people don't know people's draft story. They hear about their all star game stories or in, getting into the Hall of Fame. So, as a guy that went through the draft process but was in the minor leagues for years and, and never made it, I like asking guys about that. So, what was your draft day process like? What did that day look like for you? Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, it's it's always it's always a, like a, a good memory looking back on it because that's what got you in the door and that's what got you you know your opportunity. Um, for me, going into my junior year, I was expecting to have a monster year. You know, had a good sophomore year, and I was like, man, I can't wait. Going to go into the draft, go top three rounds, boom. You know, and like it's going to be smooth sailing. But um, you know, it didn't go that way. My junior year didn't didn't go as I planned. Didn't really know exactly where I was going to be be going. Um, Funny enough, uh, my brother was actually with me on draft day. And when the Cardinals called, it was uh, Randy Flores, who was his pitching coach for a year at SC, who's now our scouting director, assistant GM. And he called my brother and he was like, hey, can you put your, your younger brother on the line? So my brother actually got the call for me, for the team that was drafting me. And I was like, <laughs> some things... And I'm always going to be Nida's little brother. So uh, it was pretty it's pretty funny, man. That, that's like one of like probably my best memories of draft day other than obviously getting the call. But um, just that humbling experience of like my brother getting the call for me, not even me getting the call is, is a pretty good memory. You got into the minors at kind of a strange time. because Well, one, 2018, I think, was your first year. You played at State College, which is in the Penn League. I played the, that field is of in that league you got one of the better places to play as i'm sure you know that it's very hit or very hit or miss in that league but you got in right at, i think the year after i got released and then 2020 i mean i i was a few a couple of years removed at that time but i can't imagine man you're, you're a couple of years in big league potential playing well but not like not there yet to be a big leaguer and then the season's just canceled for minor leaguers and I know you said you like went to work but I, I I want to talk about that like what what was that like for you was it tough mentally and then you go work like what was that year like yeah that that year looking back on it was uh it was a strange one for sure obviously for so many people you know there's so many ups and downs and you know like it, it was just a weird time for everybody but honestly for me that that year was kind of instrumental in my career um went out to spring training Two days later, got sent back. Wasn't invited to big league camp. Came back. Um, and then all of a sudden, from there, just kind of got to work, man. It was like uh, me, my buddy that was with the Rays at the time, and uh, my buddy who's still now, you know, my hitting coach, he uh, he came down from where he was working at. And every single day, we were sneaking into the cages um, at 
wherever we could, man. We were hopping fences, doing whatever, and like hitting all day long, all day long, like just trying to get after it, trying to, you know, make the best out of a bad situation. And then um, finally, once the minor league season got canceled, um, my parents were like, hey, man, like we love you, but, you know, you got to get to work. You got to start doing something. <laughs> Uh, I signed up for classes at SC in the fall, got a semester of school done. Um, six days a week was, was doing, um, was uh, working as a manual laborer. And then um, in between that, I was, you know, like I said, I was hopping fences and trying to hit with, with, with my buddy every yeah. single day. And, and so, um, you know, like, like it, it, I learned a lot that year. I learned a lot about myself. Um, got a semester of school done, you know, got that perspective of, of an everyday job, you know, and, and, um, that was kind of huge for me, um, developing as a, as a player, um, but also developing as a person, I think, and, and kind of getting that perspective of, you know, I wasn't fortunate enough to get, um, elected to go to that, um, whatever it was the offsite alternate site yeah, thing, alternate you know, side. like you said, like I, I was playing all right, but I wasn't a prospect or anything like that. So, um, you know, that year was just kind of a year for me to, you know, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And, and obviously it wasn't ideal, but to, you know, there's really no other option other than to just try to get after and work a little bit. So that's kind of what I did. It's crazy that you're, you're doing that and then fast forward a year and you're a big leaguer. I mean, that's, you made your yeah. debut that next year, which is so cool. And I, I also like asking guys this question because I playing in the minor leagues, this is the call that every kid dreams of. And I got so close to, but never, ever got. So your call to the big leagues. Where were you? How did it happen? How cool was that that whole day? Yeah, it, it was pretty sweet. I was uh, traveling to actually Toledo, so uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was actually forty minutes away from from Detroit, and and the team was actually playing a series in in Detroit, and so uh, our Triple A manager called me, and he was like, "Hey, man, like." Uh, for the rest of your life, you're going to be able to say that you're a big leaguer. And he's like, congratulations, you know, you're, you're a big leaguer. And I was like, oh, dude, I, I was like speech. Like, I'm, it's like, yeah, I get like weird in my heart when I, when I talk about it. It's it, emotional. It's, it's, just, it's emotional, man. Yeah. And I remember I called my parents. It's funny. My parents like have never vacationed in, in their life or as long as I've been alive, like never, never them to have gone off on a vacation. It was their 30th anniversary. And so they finally said, you know what, F it, we're going to go and we're going to vacation. Oh, no. And they're in Tahiti or something like this, no. somewhere where like the only vacation they've ever taken in my life. And I'm trying to call them and they got no reception. So I'm like, no way, man. Like, this is terrible. I call my, I call my brother and, and thankfully he picks up, man. And, and for him, you know, it, it, he was so proud of me. So it was a cool moment that I got to have with him. I got emotional, you know, uh, a couple of tears, called my sister. But uh, finally, man, after like an hour or something, <laughs> I'm like, hey, 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 we call me like, like, what's going on? You know, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to the big league, but like, <laughs> home is over now, you know, like, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool. And uh, what was nice was that we were in Toledo. So um, I got out, they, they sent like a, a van, picked me up with all my stuff and drove. And so for that 40 minutes, I was just like answering text messages, yeah. called my coach you know everybody you know friends and family and stuff so it kind of gave me that time to just like get all that stuff done and, and kind of soak it in a little bit so 30th anniversary they've never gone on a true vacation the call to you comes while they're on this vacation did they have to leave the vacation early to come watch you in your first game in the big leagues no so what so unfortunately this actually sucks but Unfortunately, they couldn't make the debut. Oh, no. They couldn't because it was the next day. They were, they already had plans. They had plans to uh. go to LAX, and they were trying to like reroute it. They're in like the the airport or whatever, um, so they couldn't make the first one. We had family and friends and everybody. They were able to come out, which was cool. Uh, they came not like shortly after. I think the next series or whatever when I when I debuted in Bush. So that that was pretty cool too. But. They were like trying, they're like stressing out or whatever. And I know that, that like they, they felt bad for it, but I told them like, you know what? It's all good. Like I, you guys deserved your vacation. I'm, I'm happy. You guys are, are happily vacationing with each other. So uh, it was cool, but yeah, kind of, I may have scarred them forever to, to not go on vacation. <laughs> that's a, that's a great story. So um, you just to, to jump back a little bit as a, as a kid, when you were, I, I think I saw you were eight years old. 
your family hosted like the Japanese national high school baseball team. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. What was it? it? How true. did that come to be? So they were, they, it was like the um, high school national Japanese baseball team was coming in and they were playing at USC at NATO field, which is another full circle thing. Cause me and my brother both went there, but um, they were playing against the team USA team who had, you know, some big leaguers on it. I, I have to go back and look at the roster, but I remember like Aaron Hicks was like a two way guy on that team pitching and hitting mm -hmm. and stuff. So for me, we were host and they needed host family. So my mom being bilingual was like, yeah, absolutely. We're going to host kids. So, um, so we hosted two of them. And for me at that time, I was like, dude, these, these guys are like, like pro, like these guys are big leaguers. Like these, yeah. this is like the closest thing that I've ever been to, like being, you know, like seeing it like in real life, like how good these players are. I was like, this is unbelievable. So, um, for me, I was like, so pumped that my parents were willing to do it because they took my bed. I slept on the couch. I was like, I don't even care. Like, <laughs> do it. Hang out with these like future players like potential professional baseball players like that is everything that I ever wanted that's so cool and then um I, I found another video of you when you were in little league that uh that I want to show you before we talk about it so let's watch this now my name is Lars Newbar um number 21 and I'm Japanese uh I hope I do good during all stars and I'm gonna represent my country for Japan I mean, <laughs> Lars, I'm going to be honest, man. That's so cool. Fast forward however many years later, and you're about to play for Team Japan in the WBC after what is that's Little League All Stars, it looked like. And you said you're going to yeah. represent your country someday. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, it's uh, that moment was really cool. And uh, I mean, you could see it in my face. Like, I was like questioning whether or not to say it. You know, I'm like, <laughs> hung in the lip thing i was like should i say it i was like yeah i'm gonna say it um and i remember my dad being like man like you're gonna look back on it and think you're such a clown and i was like yeah you're probably right <laughs> but i had like it was just that was just the real genuine 10 year old me speaking you know like my heart and um the fact that now like we're here where we are and i'm able to actually do that um man it's a it's a pretty pretty surreal moment really so what is what's the connection um i know your brother was born there i believe your mom is is from there what's the connection to team japan and um and and how how is this happening yeah so my mom my mom was born and raised there um her entire side of the family is still over there so uh we have my entire mom's side in japan uh, my brother and my sister were both born there um uh, i was born in el segundo right here so um you know i think I always used to joke that I was born here so I can become president one day, but, um, but yeah, no. So that's kind of how it is. But, um, my mom grew up, I mean, a huge baseball fan, like, Oh, we would watch the Koshien tournament whenever we could. Like she yeah. was, she always knew, about, you know, the young, young talent in Japan that was going to come over to the big leagues before anybody did. I always like told everybody, like my mom knows about this guy, this guy, this guy. And then sure enough, they come over because, um, you know, that's, that's just what it is over there. Like Japanese people are just, you know, they're baseball fans. That's what they live and breathe with. So I was just over there for a couple of weeks um, last year. Uh, and, and I was over there during the, the coaching tournament. I went to Tokyo. I went to, I, I was, I was all over the place and it was such an awesome experience. And I, I'm, I'm sure for your mom, man, like how, how cool is all this about to be for her? I mean, What's she going to be prouder of? You making it to the big leagues or are you playing for Team Japan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. everybody kind of – people have been asking me, like, what's that been like for your mom? Um, Because she's been getting – she's been getting interviewed, you know, <laughs> people have been flying into the house, everything. Like, she's her own little celebrity there. But, uh, but yeah, I, I really do think – um I think she may be prouder of, of this moment, you know, like honestly. And like, of course, like we knew growing up as a family, like being be, like for me, becoming a big leaguer, just like anybody, it's, it's every kid's little dream, you know, dream. But I think there's a sense of pride when it comes to playing for team Japan and re being able to represent where she came up. And um, for me, it's, it's a pretty cool moment because she sacrificed so much for me, um, you know, as a loving mother, like just every single day was there helping me out, doing everything she could. So, um, for for her to get some of the spotlight 
with this it's 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 pretty pretty special for me i know i feel like i gotta bring her on the show now she's the real star <laughs> here i need her here <laughs> so how, how did this I, I guess how did it come to be we knew the wbc was going to be this year you've now been in the big leagues for uh, a couple of years but did you know that playing for team japan would be a possibility and how like how did it actually come to be where you ended up on the team yeah so i i had a feeling it was going to be a possibility because my mom's got her japanese passport um she was born and raised there you know so she, it was it was like um, in terms of that part, I felt like I was going to be eligible, but again, no one's been born outside of the Japan that's played for Japan. So I didn't really know if they were going to be willing to or whatever, but, um, Ipe, Shohei's interpreter reached oh, yeah. out to me when I was in Milwaukee and, uh, he was like, Hey, you know, just want to gauge your interest. Um, you know, not really sure exactly, but are you, A, are you eligible and B, like, what's your interest? And I was like, um, <laughs> Like whatever paperwork you need, I'll send it over immediately. <laughs> Very but interesting. I, I, yeah, my interest is yes. You know, <laughs> like that question about that. Um, so it took some time processing and everything like that, and obviously, you know, making sure I was a fit or, or you know, they they wanted me or, or whatever the case may have been. But um, but yeah, that's kind of what, how it happened because I think um, Kuriyama was kind of looking or asking Ipe or Shohei or, or whomever, maybe you Darvish, you know, what, what they thought if any players were eligible in the big leagues. Did you at that time know Ipe and Shohei? Like, have, did, were you close enough or did, was it just kind of like a random reach out and like a random Hail Mary? It was, it was a, it was a total random reach out. And uh, <laughs> that's great. it was like, yeah, it, it was awesome. It was like, you know, I got a, like a follow and a DM on Instagram. And I was like, man, I could be happier about this right now. <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of those things. So it, it, it was awesome. Like, I, I don't know him at all. Um, never met him in person even still. So um, excited to obviously. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give him a big old hug and, and tell him I appreciate him. You're about to get an experience that I'm sure you can't even wrap your head around yet. But you, you'll be playing in the Tokyo Dome, obviously baseball. Uh, from what I just experienced, baseball is very different in Japan. And honestly, the experience of being there and watching it, the experience being in the stands and sitting and watching a game is arguably better. I mean, it's in, there's fireworks randomly in the middle of games. There's beer girls running around every 10 seconds they're running in front of you. There's dances, there's songs. And now you're you're going to be the, the kid that's probably experienced watching a game but never playing on the field in the Tokyo Dome for Team Japan how much are you looking forward to that moment yeah I, I mean I, I can't I can't wait and like my my mom she can't get any uh she can't get any like like gear or anything like that because all of it's sold out tickets are sold out everything <laughs> like it's pretty it's pretty crazy you know what's going on there and uh like I said like I grew up trying to watch like you obviously you said you've been able to experience it yourself and and watch the Koshian tournament and stuff but like I, I've only seen it from a distance and uh, you know, like I don't, I don't know exactly what it's going to be like, but I can only imagine. So um, I, I can't wait, man. The Tokyo Dome is going to be rocking. These fans are going to be going nuts. So, um, you know, it's, it's a dream come true for me. And and now you get to be, you get to be teammates with Shohei Otani, which is really cool. I mean, one of the greatest talents the game has ever seen, but so you said you have not yet, met him in person right but obviously he's been a big part of getting this to happen so um just as a obviously the experience will mean a lot to you playing for team japan but to be on the same field and on the same team as a guy like shohei otani how much are you looking forward to that yeah uh i mean it's it's not every day you get to be able to play with a, a talent like that like you said i mean probably the most talented player ever right like i mean obviously there's going to be some arguments but you know like he's arguably the most talented player we've ever seen. Um, being able to watch him prepare, go about his business, I can't wait to soak up as much as I can from him. Just being able to watch him, like you said, be his teammate. Uh, it's going to be a pretty cool experience. Obviously, being back in Japan, it's going to be hectic. You know, it's going to be crazy with the fans and everything. But um, that's something that I that, that was like one of the first things that I thought of is like, man, I got to be on the same team as this guy. Like, I got to watch him play. Um, I've been so fortunate. I got to watch the NL MVP last year play. I got to watch Nolan, the, you know, third NL MVP. And then, you know, this upcoming, you know, WBC, I got to play with Shohei Otani and Yu Darvish. It's, it's, and then, as you probably know, you know, some of these young arms in Japan that are going to end up coming over here. Um, 
I mean, it's 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 something special. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. How's your Japanese? You fluent? Um, it's probably <laughs> worse than yours. If we're being honest here, if we're being honest here, I think I learned 20 words while I was over there. I feel like you're probably <laughs> in a little better shape than I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm hoping so. Um, so you transitioning to your time now with the Cardinals, um, obviously become a big leaguer in, in 2021, one of the greatest players in baseball, one of the best third basemen we've seen over the last decade. Nolan Arenado gets traded there the same year you become a big leaguer. He's a SoCal kid, Southern California. And I, I know you guys have gotten pretty close over the last couple of years, right? Yeah. Uh, he's like, you know, he's, he's been kind of a, like a, like a mentor, big brother on the team. Um, tight guy for me, you know, I, he was, he was, he let me stay with him last spring training with him. Um, we train, you know, I go down to his warehouse and we hit with each other. There's that picture right there. Yeah. We're, I mean, he's been so good to me, man. And, and like to have a guy, like you said, that's, you know, one of the best we've ever seen kind of play with you every single day. You kind of see what it takes, um, you know, at that level. And then for him to be able to take me under his wing and, and kind of show me the ropes a little bit of, of what it takes. Um, it's been a pretty special relationship and I'm super thankful for him. So that picture right there is from, th this was great. I remember this happening when it happened. <laughs> I need to ask about this. You guys win the NL central. You somehow become the guy to, to be <laughs> the interviewer running around. There's this one with Nolan. That was more straightforward. What I gathered from that is that he didn't hit a backside Homer, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Kisner did. And then you were chasing after Paul Goldschmidt in, in the locker room. How cool was that to just be running around, just being yourself and acting a fool in the locker room with these guys? Yeah. Uh, whatever was in those tubs, that was kind of helping me. That was kind of helping me with the microphone a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, you, you understand like, like where, where I come from. It's just like little El Segundo, you know, like a little town. Like I'm just a kid and, and like I get to walk around and I'm like, I'm in a clubhouse with Nolan and Goldie and Yachty and Wayno and Albert at that time too. And it, it's just like, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy this time, man. Like, like we, we had a, a long hard fought season. We won the division right there. And, uh, you know, I was just going to be like, you know what, whatever comes to me, comes to me, but uh pretty special moment, pretty cool. Like, you know, not, not everybody gets to experience that. So I definitely wasn't taking that for granted. I, I re-listened to this like yesterday and I couldn't really, did Nolan Arenado really not hit an oppo homer all last year? Is that true? <laughs> hey, I'm not, Hey, I'm not going to say anything. You have to do your own research. I'm not going <laughs> to say anything about it, but, but uh, all I know is he got 30 and a hundred. That's all I know. Well, that's what I know he hit. I know he had 30. So I was like, wait a second. That's that's all right. All right. So I'm sure yeah. that's, I'm sure he's ready next year to, to get one of those. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you mentioned being in the same locker room as those guys, Yachty, Wayno and, and Albert last year. And what Albert did, I mean, just I, being in the locker room during all of that as just a, a kid, I feel like Albert was in the big leagues probably around the time you were born, if not pretty close to be in the locker room for that last year with him and to be part of that stretch. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, I, it was like, I got a fast pass to like the greatest ride of all time. <laughs> like I was, I was a teammate of his for one year and got to see him, um, pass a rod, get 700, have probably the most ridiculous second half of anybody you know, that I remember, you know, like it, it, he was, I mean, obviously it was him and Aaron judge, basically the second half of the season. It was just like the most incredible thing to watch. Um, the media coverage we were getting when he was starting to chase down 700 was pretty ridiculous. And um, being able to be a teammate of his, like I, I tell people now, like, I like, I like calling him Albert. It's just so people know like, Oh, like this guy knows Albert Bulls. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's just, that's just like what it is. Like, it was like a, like a dream, you know, like every time we needed to clutch home or two, he was coming up big for us. Um, the run that he went on was just absurd and, and, um, it couldn't happen to a better guy. Like he's, he's such a humble dude. Um, you know, I was asking him questions, trying to soak up as much knowledge as I could, because, you know, I, I didn't know that, you know, how long he was going to be there for. So, um, 
uh, it was just it was it was pretty special and and to be able to be a little part of it was pretty cool I think at the beginning of the year when he announced that it was his last year it kind of seemed like a dream like maybe a wish that Albert would reach 700 like I don't think anybody truly was like man he's probably gonna get there and then after the first half you're like all right that's probably what we'd expect in the second half and then you talked about the surge he went on and he got locked in which was I mean I feel like we saw vintage Albert there for a couple of months and at what point did did you think like maybe maybe he's gonna do this like because it couldn't have been all year but it did become a certain point where it's like does he I think he might have a chance to do this yeah at the, at the halfway point we were like you know we were like man like I, I like let's just let him enjoy this last season you know like yeah. let's let's let Albert go out the way he to go like you know what I mean like he he's he's had such a crazy career let's not diminish what he's done and then he just goes off and and, and does what he did and and it was just like like everyone's kind of on pins and needles like what's going on like is he gonna do it <laughs> 696 is in reach and then that the pace he was going at we're like no way like there's just no way because he essentially sacrificed, like you said, like the first half of the season. And then he goes off and then just starts going crazy. And we're like, dude, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And then to do it in L.A. the way he did it. Oh, my God. Like it, it was like the most incredible thing. It felt like a, like a script out of a movie. Um, and it, it, we did not. Not everybody was uh, not everybody was was as optimistic as, as maybe <laughs> he to get to 700 at the beginning of the season. I wonder how hard it was to to be his manager last year because obviously like it was to the point his career he wasn't starting against many righties. First half mm -hmm. he he wasn't ever starting against righties and still like in the second half he starts going on this stretch and he's not playing every day, which I think it's fair. That's normal. I mean, he's it's the game's tough on your body and did, at that point like when he was going on this stretch and getting closer and closer and more in reach like I don't know if you've had any any discussions with the manager, but like with with Albert, was Albert wanting to play every day, or was he understanding of like I need my days, I'll play against lefties, and I'll try and get it done that way? Yeah, uh, that was that was another thing too. In like in the first half or after the first half, where we we're like he's probably not going to get it because he's probably not going to be able to get the at bats. Right. And then when he came back, started he started really raking against lefties, like like we know he can. And then, but like you said, like he wasn't really playing against righties. And then he got a couple opportunities against righties, started doing damage. And then we were like, you know, at that point, it was like, the guy's our best hitter. Like we have the NL MVP, <laughs> we've got, him, but he's still our best hitter right now. So it's like he he basically, in his twenty second season, had to play his way into the lineup to play every single day against against righties, and uh, and he did that, you know, and like. And I mean, the thing that's even more crazy is that Ollie's Ollie's younger than than Albert, you know. So it's like yeah. not only enough to be the manager, but when Albert's got a couple of years on you and <laughs> that was facing seven hundred, but you're also trying to manage, you know, winning winning a division, trying to win, make a deep postseason run. It's it's. I haven't had a conversation about it, but I can only imagine yeah. what he was thinking was going to sleep i'm sure it was a lot of uh, very difficult decisions uh <laughs> yeah. you were also in the locker room last year with yachty and wayno who in my opinion set a record that will never be close to touched um which is the most starts amongst the battery of all time obviously wayno pitching to yachty what <laughs> i mean that that's untouchable in my opinion and i think you'd you'd probably agree with that so what i want to ask instead I need your favorite Yachty and Wayno story from your time playing with those guys. Wow. Let me make this, make sure this is appropriate. <laughs> uh, those two, man, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously them breaking the record was pretty special. And then now, you know, uh, Yachty, like managing team Puerto Rico. And I don't know if you saw, but uh, when Wayno announced that he was pitching for team USA, Yachty's like, it doesn't matter. Cause I'm going to know every pitch that's coming. <laughs> um, but that 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 lead up to it was pretty, you know, was was kind of similar to the Albert one, where it was like, man, these guys are really going to get it done. And and you look at all the other names that that are on that list um, up there with them. It's like, you know, it's. I remember Harrison Bader made a joke. He's like, they all sound like law firms, you know, the last names together. They don't even sound like real people, you know, just because, like, it's a record that won't get touched. And 
um, the friendship that they had, the bonds that they had with each other, man, it, it was pretty special. And two guys that couldn't have come up um, with different backgrounds with, you know, like they were just completely different people with the greatest, like you said, like a record that will not get touched because of longevity and the dedication that they had to the game. Um, you know, and that's a record that, that I don't think, I mean, two, two things that happened last year. I don't think, I don't think it broken, but, um, but I mean, you understand being, you know, you're, you know, Justin's brother, like to have a guy a pitch that long doesn't happen very often to have a guy catch on the same team as him. is even less likely. Um, so yeah, one story. I don't. I don't know if I have one that's that's uh, that's appropriate to share. If it ends uh, up crossing yeah. the line, we can cut it out. Don't worry. <laughs> their, 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 just their relationship is is something that you know it's 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 super special. Uh, and obviously, you know, we're gonna miss Yachty, but um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it's it's weird for Wayne to throw into a guy that doesn't have you know the Jordan logo number four in his back. That's cool. I'll get, I'll get the good stories offline. We'll, we'll be able to talk about that at another time. <laughs> um, last, I got two more questions for you before we finish up. They're kind of like fun questions about your career. But the first one is you get called up in 2021. Um, you weren't this big time prospect. You weren't this first rounder, but you ended up making it, grinded through, got the call to the big leagues. But did you have like a welcome to the big leagues sort of moment, either from the guys picking on you or something that happened to you in the game what was your welcome to the big leagues moment uh that's a good question um it, it was kind of i mean it, it was kind of a mix <laughs> actually i'll say this it was uh so they obviously they obviously um you know i had to carry the poker chips everywhere and uh i had to carry the poker chips on and off you know the plane pack them uh had to give you know drinks throw away trash, do whatever the guys needed me to do. Um, I remember we were in New York and uh, it was a game. I actually, I, I robbed Pete Alonzo, which was pretty cool. And then that day we had to travel. And I, as I'm packing up all my stuff, I was like, Oh no, like uh, the poker chips, like they're, they're not in my bag. Like, where, where are they? <laughs> and I called a hotel and it's like 40 minutes away. And I'm like, Hey, I will give you everything that's in this paycheck just to come over like I don't care I don't care about anything like I just need I need to get these focus back right now she's like like dude like you guys you guys just don't go through cuss or like whatever security like everybody I can't meet you there like it's just not gonna happen the like there was like five or six guys listening to me they're all dying laughing because they hear how scared I am in the corner of the locker we're like with no shirt on just like freaking out and I'm like oh no and, and so like that plane ride that I'll tell you what that plane ride was not a fun one for me, man. Like they, I got worn out. They were, they were killing me. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that was really the first time where I was like, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm in the big leagues. These guys are a little bit different up here, but, but um, you know, like they, I, I didn't have it too, too bad. It's, it's funny, man. I had a lot of super vets that year. Um, Lester, Lester was there. Wade LeBlanc, obviously Wayne O'Yadi and those guys. Um, but yeah, that, that was like my first real real tests of man i'm 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 in the big i'm in, i'm in the big leagues man you can't be making these minor league mistakes so you never you never got the chip the the chips and the and the plane ride was full of a bunch of man it sure would be great to be playing poker right now lars i'm, I'm sure of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i wish that was it i wish that was it <laughs> um all right last one for you you've now been in the big leagues for a couple of years i want to know the toughest pitcher for you to face and you don't need to give too much credit for anybody but you in the box who's your toughest guy to face or the toughest guy that you have faced yeah. in your career um actually i was it's funny enough i was actually uh last year first day of spring training was over at, at our place at roger dean and your brother was pitching and i was like man i can't wait and uh it was me it was me and uh kisner hitting eight and nine and Kisner looks at me, he's like, hey, you're not getting him. He's only going two today. And sure enough, he went one, two, three, one, two, three, two, two innings, clean two, he's out of there. <laughs> it's your brother. Um, but I, later that spring, I went and and, uh, and I faced DeGrom. Um, and, man, it, it was just like, it, it was electric stuff. Like, uh, this, the slider came out of the same tunnel, which is biting at 92 fastball was up to a hundred and it felt like he was reaching out and, 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 you know, just like handing it to the catcher, you know, he's so long and lengthy. He's got that crazy hop on his fastball. 
um, slider seems just as hard. I remember being in that box being like, man, this is, you know, hopefully he's getting out of here in two to two. So I don't have to face him too often, but um, yeah, facing DeGrom, that, that was a good one. 102 coming from like 53 feet away must feel like 110 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It didn't matter what it was. It was just, it wasn't registering in my brain. I was like, you know what? Well, let's, let's get out. Let's get out of here, man. <laughs> Lars, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for joining me. You will forever be a friend of the pod now. Come on whenever you want. Good luck this year. Good luck in the WBC. I'll be locked in at 3 a.m. or whatever it is when y'all will be playing. But I appreciate you a lot, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me, Ben. I appreciate it. Of course, man. See ya. All right, just wanted to thank Lars for joining me. What a blast of a conversation. That guy is incredible. I was a big fan of him just from afar, and now uh, that he's come on the show, an even bigger fan of his. Some of those stories, incredible. Leaving the poker chips, the team being pissed off at him, great. How he ended up playing for Team Japan, Ipe reached out to him. He didn't even know the guy yet. He still hasn't ever met them in person, but Ipe reached out, wanted him to be a part of the team, and next thing you know, um, his childhood dream of playing for Team Japan, representing his country. How cool is that for him? So uh, what a blast of a conversation. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that plus button wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify. We're also on all social media as well, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and you can watch every episode as well on YouTube at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. Thank you all for listening. I really appreciate it. The WBC is around the corner. The season is around the corner. Let's go. I am pumped. I will see you next time for another episode of Flipping Bats.